our second Technique Tuesday, and the theme is breaststroke. And uh, we're going to do a little warm-up exercise first, and then I'm going to show some videos next, uh, some inspirational videos of uh, good breaststroke swimming. Um, I was trying to preload them and have them all ready to go, and it didn't go as good as I wanted because I was inside of uh, goswim.tv, and when I just used the link, it said I wasn't logged in. So um, I, I do have some others queued up, and I should be able to get in there. It's just going to take a moment. So we're going to do our squat, but we're going to do a different squat. We're going to do a lateral squat today. So let's get up, get ready to go. And feet are shoulder width apart, a little wider than that. They can be a little out as well because it is breaststroke. And we're going to go to our left side and you go back and down, back and down. So you're trying to send your butt back over your back heel. Send it over the left heel. Three, oh, okay. four, I'm gonna change my five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, this time we're gonna go to the right. So you go back and over behind your right heel. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, there's our 20. Uh, while we're up, um, if you have a wall you can get against, you can do the, the elbows against the wall trying to get your hands to touch. You want to look like straight through your shoulders, ribs pulled in. So you're trying to touch the wall with the, with the middle of your back, pulling your belly button in. And then you can rotate your hands down and up. But keep your chest pulled in. You can find a wall to do it. All right, um, let me come in and talk to you again for a second. I'm gonna put my glasses on so I can see. I'm gonna go to participants. Uh, and I'm muting everybody uh, right now. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Mute all. Okay. So I muted everybody for a moment because um, I got to fix my screen so that it just shows me because when it goes to video, if I upload it, I want people to just still see me. You guys can still do the view where you can see each other and that's fine, but uh, I need to keep it on uh, the view that's just me. I was, I was working at posting it last time. And what I noticed is um, if, you're, if you're off of mute, then um, uh, if you make some noise in the background, my screen jumps to you. So it just uh, messed it up. So that's why I have you guys on mute, but you guys can still unmute yourself when you need to. Um, the next exercise we're going to do as a little more warm up, and you may or may not be able to do this. You can use your soup cans if you don't have anything heavier. But if you have like a, a plate, you know, like a lifting plate or a kettlebell or something like that, the heaviest thing that you can find, it's going to help you get deeper in, into a squat. So I'm going to go down deep into a squat, and my. Um, my calves and Achilles are tight right now for running. So I can't get very deep just going down. Oh, it's really hard to get deep enough. But if I've got a nice heavy weight, that's gonna pull me down nice and deep. And I can sit at that bottom of the squat in a pretty upright position. Can't see you guys with my glasses on. So here I am at the bottom of the squat with the weight in my my elbows are pushing my knees out. And you can kind of rock around down there. And this helps open your hips up. 
So whatever you can find that's a nice heavy weight to take down to the bottom of the squat, that will also help balance you. So I'll show you that from the side as well. My butt goes back and down. I'm down in the bottom of the squat and I can ro roll around a little bit and I feel that opening up my hips and my ankles. Leaning forward into it a little bit. So that extra weight can really help you get deeper and works to stretch you out. So you don't have to do squats with it. You could just go down there and sit down there for two to three, two minutes if you can. All right. Let's see, what do we have next? So I'm gonna share my screen now and show you uh, some super fast breaststroke swimming. And let's go here, full screen, and play. This is 100 breaststroke at NC2As. Caleb Dressel, right here. One dolphin, one pull down, kick and break out. One, two, three strokes from a dive. Dolphin, pull down. One, two, three, four, five. Streamline, dolphin, pull down, sneak and kick. One, two, three, four, five. Streamline, dolphin, pull down. One, two, three, four, five. 18 strokes for 100 breaststroke. Fifty point three oh three. Fifty point oh three. Almost broke it. All right. Uh, I'm trying to find another one. Let's get back to here. It's my Go Swim account. When I did this search earlier, I couldn't get back to where I wanted to be. So I'm going to try again. Apply. There's a lot of breaststroke stuff in here, which is great. Except when you want to find the one that you want to find. And I don't think I remembered to make it a favorite. Um, let's see, breaststroke, let's see. Get out of there, let's go to, oh. Breaststroke, I thought there was elite swimming in there. There it is. These are still different videos than the ones I was trying to find. I'm gonna try it a different way. I do have a link to one of them. So let's see if I can use it this time. Okay. Hey, Mike, I just unmuted this myself one. briefly. Do you have it under, like on your dashboard under recently viewed, maybe? Good question. Um, I've watched a lot of videos lately, so it wasn't showing up uh, under that, but I'm going to try this direct link and see if I can get in that way. Oh, yeah, here we go. Yay. We have more ladies on the call today, so I'm glad I found a female breaststroker to show you guys.
So I'm just going to let that play for a moment, not say much. Just let you look and observe and see what you see. We'll count her strokes just as a comparison. Dolphin pull down, sneak and kick. One, two, three, four, five, six strokes to get across. All right, slower motion. And that right there is the moment of greatness uh, that is so hard to achieve. Um, it's getting your body into a really straight line with a flat back. And every degree that your head comes up, you start creating more resistance and your lower back arches and often the legs will start to bend as well. And I call that the three U's. The first U is your arms, the second U is your head to your butt, and the third U is your legs. And instead of being three U's, you need to be one letter I. And that really makes a big difference in how far you're traveling between strokes. So even if you're not a great breaststroker mechanically in terms of how good your legs kick, breaststroke, or any of that, um, if you can just get back into a super straight line and do that off walls, and between every stroke, it just doesn't, you won't take that many strokes. So there isn't that much opportunity for crap. You know, if you're not a great breaststroker, but you could get down to nine strokes of length instead of 12, you know, one stroke cycle takes over one second in breaststroke. So if you can snap into that line and hold a line and then take a stroke and get back into the line and have good uh, underwaters, Nine stroke cycles is a lot better than 12 and it, it burns a lot less time. So how do we do this? Uh, that's, the, that's the hard part too. Um, so we're gonna do a few more exercises. Maybe hopefully you have a mat or a soft surface to lay on. And we're gonna try this on our back and on our stomach. Um, getting to that extended straight body position. So we'll do it on our back to begin with. You just lay on your back arms at your side and you start off by pulling your belly button down and then point your toes and just take your feet a little bit off the floor. So your heels are off the floor, your toes are pointed and you're pulling your belly button down. And just that exercise there, you should feel some core activation. Now, sneak the hands up and try to get them to touch your ears and keep them pointed straight. You don't have to streamline them. You don't have to do this. You can just have them side by side. So toes are off the ground, fingers are off the ground, belly buttons pulled into the floor. You're lifting your shoulders up by your ears and stretching yourself out as long as you can. 10, Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, done. All right, we're gonna do another one. And what you wanna try to do is keep your core tension and breathe through it. You gotta still breathe and not just totally fall apart when you take a breath and not hold your breath the whole time. So see if you can keep the body position and the belly pulled down. Toes pointed, heels off the ground, hands extended, but breathe through it. All right, start the legs first, get the toes pointed, heels off the ground, not high, as close to the floor as you can, and then bring the arms up. Extend the arms and try to breathe and hold it. Keep breathing, but hold the firm body position but not holding your breath, breathing through it. 10 more seconds. And rest. All right, same thing on our stomach. This way is a little bit easier. It doesn't uh, hurt your lower back quite as much. 
So we're going to go arms extended. And the first thing you're going to try to do is pull your belly button off the floor and your toes are off the floor. So your hips and your chest are touching your foreheads an inch off the floor and your arms are trying to go right behind your ears, pointed forward. But try to keep your belly button pulled up and in. Same thing, see if you can breathe. Just hold that extended position. 10 more seconds. And rest. And we'll do one more of those, same thing. Long and straight as you can be, and the body has to be firmed up. It's like a dimmer switch where the light isn't soft and you can't read anything, and it's not as bright as you can, but it's pretty close. Make it firm and straight. All right, getting ready to go again. Pointed toes, belly button pulled up, arms off the ground, right behind your ears, heads off the ground, but not lifted. Keep it going. Extend. Make yourself longer and taller. And rest. All right. So that, that's really what I don't see when I see people's videos of them swimming underwater. I don't see them getting to that position. Hey, Mike, I muted myself. Can, Ming and um, Ronnie, we can't see you. Can you move your mat back? The only one that we could see was Mike and, and Heather. Or, or and tilt your screen down when you go to lay floor. down on the mat. Well, yeah. I just put, my, put it on the floor. I put my laptop on the floor. Ah. Um, uh, also, we can't see Dickie. Where are you, Dickie? And Heather, your back is very swayed, where Mike was completely streamlined -like, like this. You, you had the curve to your back. Your feet were a lot higher than your hip. You knew that though, huh? <laughs> it's so hard. I know, I'm not even attempting it. Thanks, Kim, I appreciate the feedback. That's helpful. <clears throat> yeah, that looks good, Ronnie. Are you doing it on a bench? You see, yeah, you must be on a bench. You're higher off the ground, that looks good. Oh no, you moved your thing to the floor, I get it. All right. All right, let's watch some more good swimming. Some more good swimming, and then a little exercises so you don't fall asleep. Share screen. Back to here. And share. Exit full screen. Find my next clip. All right, easy breaststroke. Three to four strokes of length. Let's see if this one works. Oh yeah. So uh, this is an uh, uh, NC2A swimmer that, um, uh, where'd he swim? I forget, Cardinals, whatever they are, Louisville. Um, and so uh, when Glenn was filming this, he filmed them swimming at different effort levels. And this was his easy swimming effort. 33.18 was his 50 time at his super easy effort. And what I noticed on this is his body line isn't quite as tight because he's just kind of going easy. And, he's, and he dives a little deeper in between strokes. There's the dolphin and the pull down, sneak and kick, breakout. One, two, two, three. So you see his arm angle goes kind of deep because he's going down and then waiting for buoyancy to bring him up. And that's what gets him across in so few a strokes, but it's not super fast to do that. But what I think is important to know is depending upon how far you're going in breaststroke, you, you have to change your depth. If you're gonna do a 200 breaststroke, you need to dive deeper per stroke and glide further than if you're going a 50 breaststroke. And notice how they pretty much complete the arm stroke completely before the kick. Arms, 
our hands go forward, kick. It's totally separated. It's arms first and then the legs. A lot of people are moving their legs at the same time the arms are coming back and then that really puts the brakes on. So watch that timing. Arm stroke, the legs are, are supposed to still be straight. His are a little lazy. And then his hands are moving forward and now the, the kick goes when he's in a streamlined position. And that's what sends him so far out in front. Now again, that's super deep because he's only doing um, three strokes of length. Let's see him going at 28 seconds of 50. So now he's going a 5,600 breaststroke from a push. Uh, okay, let's go back to here and back to here. Paste that in, see if that works. Here we go, fast breaststroke. Dolphin, pull down, sneak and kick. One, two, three, four, five, six strokes. Line, dolphin, pull down. Do you see how, whoops, wrong button. What I really like is the patience after the, the push off into that streamline, the patience in that position that we are just working on. And then the big dolphin pull down and that right there is another, what I call a moment of greatness. It's getting back into the straight line with the head neutral and just riding it. And I see in this position here, people's heads are usually either buried way too deep and then their legs float up or they're looking too far forward and their back arches and it hooks them up to the surface too early. So that's a real sneaky place that you wanna to learn to get. At the finish of the pull down, that you're straight and parallel to the surface. Now see how much shallower the, the extension is now. He's not diving deep anymore. Slow motion, same thing. Dolphin right into the pull down, into the straight body line, the third eye, I call that one. No, the second eye, that's the lowercase. Then he kicks into the third eye, and now his full stroke. Arms, legs. Arms, legs. So those hands have to be shooting back to the front really fast on the recovery or else they create a lot of drag. This is where a lot of people pause, is right there. When they're getting the breath, they're at their highest point and the arms just stop. And that just creates tremendous drag and then they just drift down, sink. So um, if you watch them at full speed, good breast strokers, they get through really fast back to the front. They're trying to minimize the time that they're in that slow part of the stroke. All right, so let's get out of there. All right. And I'm just checking things real quick. making sure there isn't anybody sitting in a waiting room or something. I'm pretty sure I turned off the waiting room. All right, heads up on, uh, I think this meeting can go as long as we want because I upgraded, but if it doesn't, because maybe it takes a while to do, um, we can take a brief break at the end and you can still ask questions or whatever. And then I'm gonna send you, I'm gonna post the, uh, the Nova calendar link. And if you log in to next week's um, uh, Technique Tuesday, then you'll, we can start a second meeting and that one's kind of unlimited. So let me just grab that, um, that link real quick for you. Right here. So Mike, I don't see a message saying that we only have 10 minutes left. A hey, good point. So I think we'll be all right. 
At least not yet. Good point. But just in case we lose it, copy. And then I want to get back to here. Then I want to go to comments. All right, and put that one in. All right, so that's the, our calendar link. And it, like I said, you just click into the one for next Tuesday and I'll reopen that up. It takes me a minute or two to get logged back in if we get shut down. But I think we're okay because Robin brings up a good point. We didn't get, I don't have the warning, so we're still doing okay. All right, um, let me get back to my notes here real quick to see what else I wanted to go over here. Uh, this is kind of a cool video. It's a, definitely a very different look. You don't get to see this very much. This is um, directly underneath the swimmer. Let's see if I can get this to work. And maybe I'm not in the right place. Got a share screen. Go to here. Share that. And play. That's a really cool view, huh? Directly underneath. So the hands are together uh, off the wall, uh, fire forward, and then they separate to shoulder width because that's how you can get your head down in between your arms. I think it's really hard to get your, hand, your head down enough when your hands are like that out in front. So if you can separate the hands when you extend forward, your head can drop in line with your body line, and that's really important. That's a super cool view though, huh? All right, what do we got next? All right, I pulled this as well, just cause some people do have access right now to, um, to short pools and cables. This is what it looks like doing it with a, a breaststroke, breaststroke with the cord on. And he only does like, uh, five strokes and then he just floats back and does it again. Uh, I would recommend doing the number of strokes you do to get across the pool. So if you take 10 strokes of length, you should probably take 10 strokes. On that one, he just did three, but then I think he does five on this one. One, two, three, four, five. Pretty explosive swimming right there. And it, that's how tired he gets in just five strokes. But again, he takes about five strokes of length. I noticed he didn't really do the pull down work. And I think with the cable on it, you, it kind of messes the timing up. So I recommend if you're doing it on the cord, you skip the underwater uh, pull down. You just streamline off the wall and then just get up and go into the swimming and see how well you can hold the water. All right, let's get out of full screen there and see what the next one is that I have that's good. All right, so here's another exercise that you may or may not be able to do depending on what equipment you have. But if you have a Swiss ball or a stability ball, this is a pretty cool one. Uh-oh, it jumped to the next video. Let me see if I can get it to go back and forward. And here, there we go. See if it'll load. I'm not sure if it will. Might have to refresh that. There we go. So if you do have a ball, you could try this right now. You can get yourself kind of in a breaststroke position with your elbows on the ball 
with your knees on the floor. And if you have a pad for your knees, I would double up the pad. So you fold your mat in half to give your knee a little bit more. Yes. Don't lay on the ball though, Veronica. Just, yeah, cut, yes. Be a little more upright, yep. So, Ronnie, you could just start by pulling your heels from the floor towards your butt and not try to do the out part, yep. But as they come up, you gotta flex your feet, not have them pointed, yes. Just that movement right there is a good exercise. Working on the recovery phase first, and then you can let the feet kind of fall to the outside and do the rest of it. So if you have a ball, you can try that. And let's see, last one here. All right, so this is um, a warm-up routine for your shoulders. And you don't have to have a kettlebell. You could have any weight at all if you have a kettlebell, great. He's doing this with a pretty heavy kettlebell. Um, but the idea is that your core stays super straight. Straight line, pull over. The reason for that is that most people have no idea where their shoulders are in space. So when we do our normal halo, we start. You by might have to turn up your volume if it's here them if one you can. At a time, but they have a way to kind of escape any mobility limiting issues in their shoulder in the beginning. With our straight line pullover, the goal here is to have our elbows stay close together at the top of the movement and not flare out. The further out our elbows go, the more it becomes these little muscles up in the front and the less it becomes the big lat in the back. The goal of this exercise is to get the lats on, have the lats and the abs resist extension, and then bring it back down. There will be some elbow flare at the top. We want to minimize the elbow flare, and if you're starting to feel stress in the front of your shoulder, for the love of God, get a lighter weight. Get a lighter weight, get a lighter weight, get a lighter weight. You can always get a lighter weight and focus on squeezing all the way until you're touching your temples at the top of this movement, and then pull down. As we pick the weight up, we're gonna to get to our 90 degree angle. As standard, if we see a gap between our body, we're gonna squeeze our elbows in. If the kettlebell is resting on our body, don't do it, because you're gonna drag it right over your face. Do your halo and your alternating halo until you get strong enough to get to this position. Without so this other exercise he's talking about called the halo was a pretty cool one too, where you go around in a circle around your head. But again, you gotta keep your core straight when you do it and not be arching your back when you do it. So you can go one direction around for like five repeats and then go the other direction around for five repeats. If you have a heavier weight, it's gonna be less repeats. If you only have a 10 pound dumbbell or a five pound dumbbell, you can do it with that too. You know, of going five repeats around and then go the other way. And you're just trying to get full range of motion and doing that with a little bit of a weight is really awesome for kind of waking up your shoulder mobility. So those are some really nice shoulder exercise you can do to, to get better ranges of motion with your shoulders. And he explains it really well with what the core and the body has to do. So I'm gonna turn it back on. Your elbows tracking back behind your body. <clears throat> Straight back, squeeze the elbows in tight as they can go, pull over. Much like what you need to do in a pull down in breaststroke, keeping that core over. straight as Back. you do the pull down. Squeeze the elbows tight, pull over. What we want to avoid is getting to the back and lifting our rib cage up. If we feel stress in our lower back, 
you are not resisting extension yet. Figure out how to get a lighter weight or push the rib cage down. Go back, go to the ground, do your flat back ground pullover, the ground version, the flat back pullover on the ground. Here's what that looks like. Chain, which means your lower back is touching the ground, which means it will tell you if you've lifted your rib cage up or not. Practice that version. If you stand up, if you come to the standing position and you go back and your rib cage lifts and you dump your lower back, your glutes are off, then they need to be tucked underneath. The abs need to be on, 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 and they need to stay on the entire time. Uh, when I coach this, I like to walk up and give them a jovial punch in the stomach right in the middle of the activity so they know whether or not they have dumped their core or not if their core is on. This is not just a lat exercise. This is a everything exercise. It should all be on. And what we are doing is the classic phrase, breathing behind the shield. This is your shield, and you should be able to talk and breathe with these muscles on the entire time. If somebody hits you while you're lifting and you lose breath, the shield is gone. The point of all of these activities is to create that shield of ab muscle that's always on, always engaged, always resisting extension, always resisting rotation, or creating any one of those things. If your glutes are off, then your abs are probably about half on. The glutes are really the bottom of the core. Ribs down, pelvic floor tucked underneath, squeeze the booty, resist extension, squeeze the elbows in at the top, pull all the way down, 90 degrees, no gap. This has been Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica. All right, stop sharing the screen. All right, that I thought was a pretty interesting explanation of having this shield that you're trying to keep firm all the time. It was a very interesting way to explain it and that you have to breathe behind your shield. But man, we don't have many shields at the pool. I see a lot of wet, loosey-goosey bodies when they're going through the water and you can't go fast oh, this is Mark when, you're, when you're like that. Today All right, let me uh, turn out that thing hang on a sec pause all right we're back bang and unmute all all right so everybody is off mute and i can see everybody now except for dicky dicky's hiding but i guess he is there maybe he's on the phone call or something uh he said he's walking around with his uh and not okay. doing everything and didn't want to distract us but i have a question mike i missed i was trying to move to another location. So if I could do the exercises, I would in my office. But did you say you're going to post these videos for uh, us yeah. to review? Yeah. A There's some really good points in there. And I, and I can't retain everything that's being said. And I didn't take copious notes. So mm -hmm. especially about the core. The, the last gentleman, what was his name again? I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll post the link for that. All right. OK, perfect. <laughs> Let's see if this works. I, I don't know how well this will work, but um, this is an awfully big thing here. Copy. Get back to here. I don't know how many of these are going to come through if I type it into the into the notes. Let's see. Oops. It says Ming. Maybe I just sent that to Ming. Let me try everybody. <laughs> No, I don't think it's letting me cut and paste something in that big. It does say file though, so maybe I can make a file. Can't. So a question, the, yes. stretch, the stretchy cord, kind of if you could give us um, the dry land, the one that you'd had hanging on your bar, and then if we were able to find a pool, what would you recommend with a wetsuit on? Um, the stretch bungee cords. I see many different types out there and I kind of like, like test kitchen. Okay, this is the Cadillac one, the expensive one. And this is the practical one that most people can afford. And this is second best. Do you have kind of a list? Um, I pretty much used the Finesse one for the dryland cord. That's a uh, middle weight one, the green. The yellow is lighter, which is probably better for most people, especially for most ladies. 
So you can get a resistance from the front all the way to the back. If, you're, if your cord is too tight, if you're getting resistance at the front, you can't even make it to the back. And if you have resistance at the back, it's like soft and loosey-goosey in the front. So probably the yellow finesse cords is my first choice. If you can only have one, I have a couple different thicknesses, but that one's the green. I'm a little bit stronger with it. Um, for breaststroke, I back way up and I just work on that front part of the stroke. So I'll do like uh, five or six strokes like that with this cord. Let me put mine on. What part of but Ming, if you're in a pool, then you need the waist belt. Right, right, right. Yeah. I would got one last week on Amazon. Yes. Which one? Um, let me check. I have it. It's either Thanks. probably the regular stretch cords. They're from New Zealand with a Z at the end. Or Finis. I have both. The Finis ones are nice. They're also cheaper. So I'm buying a backyard pool today, and I'm so over not swimming. It's a swim tether. <laughs> it was like 50 bucks. We're just going to hang Swim tether for Heather. Swim tether, swim tether for Heather. For Heather. Uh, <laughs> what's your water temp, Heather? Don't know, but it's got to be warm. We're doing like <laughs> emptying the water heater. Um, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I told Sean that's how we have to do it. <laughs> so, um, I have been sending a link to people for uh, getting a, a, a cord to use in the water. And it's, uh, it's a company called Lane Gainer. And it's like 40 bucks, 39 bucks. So I definitely have that link. Uh, I could get to you pretty quick if you send me an email. I'll just copy and paste it to you. Uh, I know the guy, uh, Craig Askins, I think is his name. And he's in the Midwest somewhere. And he does have availability of stuff. So some of the other places I know have sold out and they're kind of hard to find right now. Yeah, this I, one, I they didn't least, have many. I know at least two or three people that have gotten them. Uh, Larry Davison got one, I'm pretty sure. Um, Aaron may have gotten one too, Aaron Blaisdell. Skittles, I think he has one. Um, so the, the, with the rubber cables, the, the trick with that one is you want to keep as much stretchiness as you can but not have it to where you're hitting the other side of the pool. So it takes some playing around. And what I found is the further away you can get the anchor point, the better. Because if your anchor point is like right at the pool's edge, you have to shorten the cable up so much that it has no stretchiness at all. It's just gonna keep you in this much area. Whereas if you can anchor it like 25 feet back from the edge of the pool, the, the cable can be stretchy and you can just like wrap it around something or add rope to get the right distance that, you know, you push off, you have a little resistance, you get swimming and maybe you can barely maybe make it to the other side, maybe not. And uh, I put uh, weights on the bottom of the pool or bricks or something as markers oh, yeah. to try to swim out to. And I have my easy <laughs> marker and then my faster marker. And they might not be perfect, but they are giving a, you a visual of where you're at in the pool because if you're in a pool with no lines or anything, you don't know where you're at. You get kind of dizzy and weird. So you kind of need something to be able to look at. A mirror would be the optimal. There are mirrors that you can put on the bottom of the pool that are made out of metal. Um, and I have one of those as well that Vasa, uh, I got from these guys when I got the Vasa trainer. I, I'm gonna show you guys some Vasa workouts at some point, but I'm so embarrassed of how messy my garage is. But uh, Austri well, that'll is motivate excited you to about that because she's, that's definitely one of the projects she's given me during uh, this <laughs> downtime that I get that garage cleaned up. So hopefully that'll happen. Do we have uh, more comments or questions? Glad you pointed out that this takes a little bit distance to wrap it. We're just gonna tie it to the roof, but we might have to use a motorcycle trailer. It's amazing how it doesn't take that much uh, weight to do it. Um, at the pool I've been going to, the guy just has a bucket full of bricks. Oh. And, uh, mm -hmm. and it just wrapped around the bucket. And wow. it, it's, it hasn't been moving. So that's cool. I don't know. That works okay. pretty well. All right. So 
a bucket full of sand or bricks or something might right. might be enough as long as it's not on a super slippery surface you know and then what's nice about the bucket is then you can move it pretty easily how far away you want it right good point okay okay good well i'll video and let you know how it goes yeah yeah That'd be um, nice. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw, but U.S. Master Swimming sent out a note that, you know, because um, Nationals is coming up this week and it's not happening, mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. having like some kind of at-home competitions and stuff. So you can videotape yourself doing silly swim stuff or whatever and send it in. So um, I think I'm going to go over to this pool and swim a short course 200 butterfly because <laughs> from wall to wall... <laughs> I can push off and take like two strokes and do a turn and two strokes and do a turn. So I'm going to do eight laps of butterfly, which is two strokes of length, which is my 200 fly and that's short course. And that's the best 200 fly ever. Right. Only happen to take two strokes of length. Yeah. And push off. <laughs> it's still really tiring because you're underwater so much of the time. It's really tough. Like we've been doing all this cable swimming there and I'm like, well, you know, that gets boring too and your shoulders and stuff. I said, let's take a break and just go, you know, at it. So <laughs> he has some square like paver bricks, you know, from like making a driveway or a walkway. And if I put two side by side and one on top, it makes a little T. Nice. So I put those on the bottom of the pool, you know, the right distance from the wall and I have my turning tees at each end. It's pretty neat. Perfect. So. I'll have that video probably sometime this next week. Okay. Awesome. Well, I don't have any access to water other than we have an above ground spa. Little, it's uh -huh. um, and I, I'll go in there and sit on the edge and I try to do some arms just to feel the feel water. The resistance. Um, yeah. it's, it's kind of hard because I'm all crunched. But right. yeah. You know that, that drill where you uh, skull like this? <laughs> Where you're uh, sculling and you're. Oh, you're like, I, you know, I do that too. Kind of sit like this. Because this is really a good. It, you're doing the breaststroke movement, mm -hmm. <laughs> but with your feet up out of the water. And you can do that in a really small space. And that is a really good kick ass uh, forearm and gut. You'll and really gut. feel that exercise. So are you just, you're doing this, you're, you're not going back and no, forth? No, it's a breaststroke movement. So your okay. arms are doing that move. Just like a scoop. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I haven't been in the ocean because, I, you know, this social distancing thing, and I don't want to go out in a group. I know a lot are still going out in the group, but I'm not comfortable doing that. So, so um, that's a good uh, reminder. Thursday morning, I'm having an open water swim, and I, I would recommend that you do come try it. And I'm going to be pretty, uh, pretty on people to keep their distance. I've got it all planned out as to how far apart I'm going to start people and stagger them by speed. And we're going to leave a minute apart and uh, not be all gathered together on the beach and stuff. I, I wrote a pretty extensive uh, info on it that I, I'm only sending to the people that, you know, ask. And right now I have three or four people that are coming. So it won't be real big, but it's going to be spread out. But you're going to get a really good workout. Okay. I would Maybe I'll drive down. Where, Where is it? Is that the bay? Your bay? Uh, you have to you have to send me an email to get the details and the, okay. the map and all that. It's a secret right. I'll all do right. it. But you have to read the information first and not not uh, just pass it on and have all these people that come there and are talking super loud at six in the morning with all these houses right there. Like we're gonna keep it under the radar and be nice and quiet. And I just wrote it all out in a description. So uh, I think you'd have fun. I think you'd be, you'd keep your social distancing, but it's a good workout because it's a, there's buoy line. So you're going exactly the same course every time. So we can, we can get times on it. I've been doing 500 meter, 500 yard repeats. I did four 500s at my last one and I went 647. Second one was seven minutes because I stopped a little too early early it would have been like the same pretty close and then the third one was 648 and the last one was 647 so i mean they were like within one second of nice. each other except for the one i messed up my stop so it it's not like you're getting random times you can really dial it down and since there's eight buoys 
if you want to go a shorter distance intervals, you could go three buoys down instead of eight or something like that to do like 200 meter repeats. But okay. I just think you get a lot more out of it doing like intervals and not just floundering around for an hour in the ocean and stopping and talking with people and all that stuff. Okay, cool. Thank you. Also on this, the videos and the lesson today, I want to thank you a lot. Visually, it helped me because everyone, I mean, Kim, you keep telling me this and Mike, you keep telling me that I'm taking my arms back too far. And I noticed everything is here. Mm -hmm. it, it's, and that is really weird for me because I'm so used to doing this whole full, you know, I'm trying to like, because I'm so sucky at breast work, it's like, I got to get it all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it it yeah. seems like this isn't going to do it for me, but I'm, I've been using my cords and I've really been working on the, this. And as far as the legs, we'll, we'll see what I can do with those at some point. <laughs> that comes next. But I yeah. just noticed that More of a skull than a pole. Yeah, you, when you get that big pole that comes back so far, you end up spending so much time in that terrible drag position that that's what makes you take so many more strokes and just turning the corner much quicker, getting back out in front to get back into that line shape, that's what takes you so far across the pool in fewer strokes. And the video was great in that, Robin, when you keep saying pull those, the, the, the heels to the butt, mm -hmm. yeah. They make it look so easy. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> also, way more flexible than we are. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this this motion here, you can be laying on your stomach. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I gotta wrap this up, guys. Ostrid, uh, I just turned the screen around. You can go by. All right. Ostrid's uh, just got done with her workout. She was on her bike hitting the trainer in the garage. Mm. But she didn't want to make a secret appearance going by in the background like uh, the cat does all the time. I love seeing it go by. That's really fun. <laughs> she was in there a lot yesterday. She was hanging out on the mat right at the beginning of the practice for like two or three minutes, I think. <laughs> All right, King, well, I think that's it. We almost burned a full hour today. I know. Cool. Uh, next week is backstroke, so uh, tell your friends. Um, Thank you so much. And I'll, yes. I'll have more. Uh, I, what I try to do is have at least one race to watch and then, you know, some full stroke swimming above and below the water so you can kind of get that mental picture. And then we do a few exercises that kind of simulate some of those movements. Okay. All right, guys. Good to thank see you. you. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Alrighty, bye. See ya.